But God takes what's going on in the world today to destroy the works of the devil. Somebody digest that for me just a little bit, would you? When everything goes wrong, I sat there the other night and I was praying. And on 9 11, 2001, I got up that morning and was sitting there ready to drink a cup of coffee, but I couldn't drink a cup of coffee that morning because I was having to go to the Cancer Institute to get a treatment for cancer. And John the doctor told me I would have had 22 tumors on my body, all over my body, and they was bleeding and hurting all that they hurt. Oh God, did they hurt. I was sitting there watching that first plane come into the building and I said, oh God, are you coming to the church? And I got down next to the table and I prayed. And, and then when the next plane come in, I said, it's the devil. It's the fight of the enemy. I'm standing there and I'm fighting the, the devil on my own little four by eight square. And I'm fighting with everything I've got. The doctor said, you know, he said, you're not going to live, but we'll help you through the process. Amen. You see, they help you through the process of dying. They didn't know I'd already died and passed from death on the line. I was living. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they didn't know that part, but, but I knew that part. And, 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 and I looked over and I said, well, doctor, you just do everything you can do, but I'm just going to go to the Father. I'm going to go to Him, and I'm going to start praying to Him. How many here knows that when you get down to business with God, if my people that are called by my, my name will humble themselves, you don't know what being humble is until you realize that you might not get another breath tomorrow. You might not see your grandkids live. You might not see your children live. I was fighting a battle. I said, Lord, let me give you my resume. How many of you know that God doesn't care about your resume? <laughs> there I went to God and I told him I was there when, when a little 12 year old girl who had never walked in her life got up out of a wheelchair and walked. She had, she had that, that arthritis that, that does the bone and, and it, her, her whole body was like the earlobe on your ear. She had no bones inside her body. She could take her fingers and tie them in knots because she had no bones. And she'd been in this wheelchair for all this time. And I was there. And I said, Lord, I was there. And he said, go ahead and finish it. I said, I was there when you brought her out of that wheelchair. He said, it's not a new resume, is it? <laughs> you see, God doesn't care about your resume. Because you're not here today breathing unless He give it to you to breathe. There's not a miracle that you've seen worked in your life unless He brought it to you to work. There's not a thing that's done in your life unless He does it through you. Can you say amen? It's not of me, but it's of God. And as I begin to talk to Him, I begin to realize God doesn't care about your resumes. All He cares about is how much love, how much faith, and are you going to change your direction? I said, yes, Lord. Let's get with it. <laughs> Went back to the doctor. I'll, I'll hurry through this real quick. Went back to the doctor three months later. I'm going to die in three months. Went back to the doctor and three months later. Walked up there and he's got a book about this thick. And he's got his arms folded around like this and he's looking at me. And Dave, he's about from where you're at to where I'm at. And he starts to look at me and my wife got off the elevator together and he looked at me and and a tear was coming down the side of his face. And I could see that tear building up inside there, welling up in his eyes. I looked over at my wife and I said, He fell so <laughs> She reached her old hand out and she grabbed my hand and preacher, she squeezed out on me. She said, And this too shall come to pass. Thank God for preacher's wives. This is better than they do. <laughs> And as I got close to where he was at, he looked at me and he said, Henry, 
you know, in three months, we got the world news on first name basis. <laughs> he liked me so much, he said, he said, you know, he said, I'd like to take you home to meet my mother in, in, in Boston. He said, we, and she would really like you. And I said, Doc, he said, what? I said, I've only known you three months. You ready to take me home and meet your mom? <laughs> That's what I mean. In the face of trouble, he said, you can smile. I said, because God sent his only begotten son to destroy the works of the devil. I'm glad he's here. He said, I was looking at your records. He said, you had 39 heart attacks. I said, forget the heart attacks. He said, but you had this, you had that heart attack. I said, just forget about that. I said, God took care of all that. I ain't got nothing wrong with my heart. He said, that's what I'm trying to tell you, Henry. He said, the same God took care of your heart, took care of your cancer, you ain't got no cancer. <laughs> And all that to say this. Nothing happens without God knowing about it. There's a lady in this church has a scripture, you see, she wants us to put that on her tombstone, but she'll never receive a tombstone, so how the hollow world we're going to put it on there. But Sister Jane, what is your scripture? And we know that all things work together for good. You see. A lot of people today are still living with all the destruction of light and loving. But I've grown to realize that it was there for a cause. It filled my church up. It brought people to me that was hurting, aching, crying. And we had people that was able to talk to them about changing their direction. It took a warning from God, but a lot of people have changed their directions. There's a lot of people that have turned their hearts over to God and they're preaching and they're seeking God. There's families that have come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and they're doing a great job. Can you say amen? Amen. Please forgive me if I keep too long. But you see, God's warnings are directed. There's probably been people this year that's been healed of cancer like me. Who doesn't have cancer today so they don't figure they need to go to church. You know, God will see another cancer truck over there to pick them up. Yeah. Does God do things like that? No. The Bible says that he'll turn such one over to the destruction of the flesh that the soul might be one there. Say, preacher, what was going on with you? I was moonlighting God. Anybody here know what moonlighting God means? I was trying to pass their church and our businesses. Couldn't do that. Because you see, God wants you to do what God wants you to do. And if you're not doing what God wants you to do this morning, warnings are coming. Do you got children this morning? Yes. Got grandchildren this morning? Yes. Are they saved? I don't think so. How about you? What are you doing about it? I'm seeking God. I want him to be. I want him to be in the church. Is drugs real today? Yes. You know, drugs are so real today that that the government can't do nothing with it, so they're going to start selling it. What about weapons? Weapons are so real today that, that, that you can walk down in your own house and in your own neighborhood and you can find guns all over the place. Everybody's got a gun. I'm afraid to roll my window down and, and ask for direction. If the guy next to me takes it the wrong way, he'll shoot me thinking I'm a terrorist. 